Welcome to the video on sustainability in sporting events. In this video, we will look at the sporting industry, especially in terms of the events which are organized, such as Olympics, Asian Games, etc. And we'll see how these events can be made sustainable. To explain it better, I will take the example of the Paris Olympics, which is being held from 26th July 2024 to 11th August 2024 in Paris. But this is applicable to almost all the events. So I will make use of this article which was published in the newspaper. The article says Paris Olympics aims to be the most sustainable event ever. So the need to reduce the global carbon footprint extends to all types of industries like manufacturing, retail, food processing, etc. Sporting events can also be key contributor to the sustainability initiative, especially when we are talking about huge events like the Olympics, where more than 10,500 athletes will participate around 15.3 million visitors are expected to attend the games. 8,500 spectators are expected to take long haul flights, etc. Now, amidst all this, the Paris Olympics, which is happening from 26th July 2024 to 11th August 2024, aims to be the most sustainable event ever. Now, in 2015, at the United Nations Climate Change Conference near Paris, France, a treaty was signed by almost 196 countries. This treaty covers climate change mitigation, adaptation and financing. This treaty is also known as the Paris Climate Agreement. Now, as part of this agreement, the countries agreed to keep the rise in global surface temperature to well below 2 degrees Celsius as compared to the temperature during the pre-industrial levels, which is the year 1850. Now, the treaty also states that preferably the limit of the increase should only be 1.5 degrees Celsius. So even though they are capping at 2 degrees Celsius, the target they have set is 1.5 degrees Celsius as compared to the pre-industrial levels, which is the year 1850. So whatever was the temperature at that time in 1850, globally, the increase should not exceed 2 degrees Celsius. That's the treaty. And to achieve this temperature goal, the greenhouse gas emissions should be reduced soon and by as much as possible. Now with 2015 Paris Climate Agreement as the inspiration, organizers are pulling out all the ideas to cut the carbon footprint of the Paris Olympics by 50% when compared to previous games. So let's see how this is being achieved. Now the Paris Olympics has targeted emission reductions across three main categories. First is construction, second is operations and third is transportation. So they have identified these three areas where they are going to focus their energies to reduce the carbon footprint. So let's first look at construction part. So a new aquatics center is being built, but reusable French timber is being used to reduce the construction emissions. Now using timber and low carbon cement along with recycled materials, will cut emissions by 30% as per Georgina Grenon, Paris Games Director of Environmental Excellence. 
So the question is that how does timber help? So firstly, growing trees absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and they store that carbon. Now this carbon remains locked up for the lifespan of the wood even when it is cut and used for building things like homes and furniture. So instead of using the timber for construction, if it is allowed to decay or burn, then it releases the stored carbon into the atmosphere. Also, timber is a more sustainable option compared to steel and concrete because steel and concrete require more energy to produce as compared to arranging for timber. Okay, so that's the logic for using timber which helps in reducing the carbon emissions. Now next is a 128 acre athlete's village features an unconventional air conditioning system. Inside the village, the buildings will be cooled using pipes under the floors. This technology, which is called Geo Exchange, will help regulate temperatures in the athlete's village. So basically, instead of using the regular air conditioning systems, they are using a different technology called Geo Exchange to cool the athlete's village where basically the athletes are going to live. Now let's look at some other ideas of reducing the carbon footprint for these events. So 100% renewable power. Now this is also another sustainable idea from wind and solar farms and solar panels to be used for the games. So they are using renewable energy for the games. Minimizing use of diesel generators. A few generators that will have to be used during the games will be powered by biofuel, H2 or batteries. So they are not using diesel generators. Instead of that, they are using biofuel, H2 and batteries. 4,680 square meters of solar panels are being installed at the aquatic center and its seats which are being made from recycled local plastic waste. So they are using recycled material as much as possible. 95% of the competition venues are pre-existing like the Grand Pelias a historical monument and Place de la Concorde, a public square in Paris, or are temporary. So they are not building anything new for these games. They are using existing historical monuments or existing venues or are making some temporary venues. So existing, pre-existing venues. Venues are pre-existing. That's the idea here. Now, the Torilis pool, a swimming pool built for the 1924 Paris Olympics to be used as a training site. So they are reusing the facilities which have been available for past events instead of recreating new. Out of 2 million pieces of sports equipment, 75% will be rented or provided by sports federations. So they are not even going to use and throw the sports equipment. Most of them will be rented or provided by sports federations. 75% of the electronic equipment like screens, computers and printers will be rented. So most of the item will be rented. Rented means that it will be reused. So it will not be just used and throw away. Right. So it will be it will be taken, it will be used and then returned so that it can be reused by others. 9000 trees have been planted around the athletes village. So instead of cutting trees, they are planting new trees. So tree plantation. 
2,800 Olympic apartments will be converted into homes after the games. So these facilities that you see here, these are not going to be one time. These are going to be reused and converted into homes after the games. So these are some of the ideas in terms of construction. Now let us look at some ideas in the field of operations. Now in terms of operations, the average meal in France, restaurant or home prepared, produces about 2 kg of carbon dioxide. Now Paris 2024 aims to halve that by sourcing 80% of ingredients locally. So basically they are cutting on the transport emissions. So they're cutting the transport emissions. They are sourcing it locally. So basically if you source these ingredients from close by locations, then less transportation will be used thereby cutting the transport emissions and offering spectators 60% plant-based foods. So now this is another thing. So instead of non-vegetarian food, they are preferring plant-based or vegetarian food. Philip Woods, the game's catering head, told the newspaper. So how does plant-based food help in sustainability? Let's look at that aspect. So as per studies done, the animal agriculture sector is responsible for almost 65% of the worldwide nitrous oxide emissions. Raising animals uses over 50% of fresh water. Transitioning to a plant-based diet can lower the pressure on water resources and promote sustainable water management. So first is that overall the animal sector produces almost 65% of the nitrous oxide emissions. Second is that raising animals uses a lot of fresh water. So that can be reduced if we move to plant based foods. And third is that the plant based diet also helps in mitigating deforestation and habitat destruction. A lot of forests are cleared to create grazing land for cattle or to grow feed crops. Reducing the demand for animal products promotes preservation of natural habitats and can improve the ecological balance. So third is basically if we are moving towards plant based food, then we can prevent the deforestation and habitat destruction. So that's the part on making more plant based foods than animal based food. The next point is reduce single use plastic in catering by half. The next point is 100% reuse of catering equipment and infrastructure after the games. So again, reuse rather than use and throw. The next point is visitors will be allowed to enter venues with their own reusable bottles. So a lot of venues ask the visitors not to bring anything eatable or drinkable from outside the venue. But in this case, the visitors will be allowed to bring their own reusable bottles because if they don't, then they have to buy the plastic bottles which they will throw and it adds up to the carbon emissions. Whereas here, they will use their reusable bottles and which will help reduce the carbon emissions. Now, next, let's look at the transportation aspect. Now, with regards to transportation, 15% planned expansion of bus, metro and train services in the Paris region compared to regular summer traffic. So, they are encouraging more usage of the public transport. Now the next is 80% of the venues are located within 10 kilometers of the Olympic village to minimize travel time. So there will be different venues for different sporting events and Olympic village is where all the athletes are going to live. 
So in order to reduce the transportation emissions, they have kept all the venues close by to the Olympic village so that the transportation gets reduced and thereby the emissions will get reduced. 40% fewer vehicles will be used compared to previous games. Now, of course, if the there is a reduction in travel distance, then lesser vehicles will be required. And 3,000 extra pay-as-you-go bikes are being made available. So basically, instead of using heavy vehicles, which take a lot of diesel or petrol and make a lot of emissions, they are using bikes which are more eco-friendly and they are increasing this number. So these are some of the ways the Paris Olympics is using to make this event more sustainable. This is applicable to all events whether it happens at a smaller scale or large scale. This should be these ideas can be used to reduce the overall carbon footprint. Thank you.